Joining us in the kitchen today is Janet Lee. Black Widow. She was recently inducted into the Billiards Hall of Fame and joins us on behalf of the Black Widow Foundation, which tries to positively develop personal character and leadership skill sets of aspiring youth billiards players. Let's talk to Jeanette. Can you give us a good story back before you were famous of you hustling, of you just stealing someone's money because you were a lot better than they were and they didn't know that you were good at pool? Hmm. I'd say even from the beginning when I first started playing pool, there were always guys that just automatically assumed that they were better than me. And they were. Very often they were better than me. But winning is not necessarily about who's better. It's how you make the game. And it, it was very much of an advantage because everyone always asked me, do, do you love hustling? Did you ever have to hustle? And I always said, I am the hustle. Me being a woman right. is the hustle. I really don't have to do much. So what would you point to and say, that's the most I ever won in a hustle? You know, again, I don't know if I could say hustle, as, but the most I ever won at one time was uh, $90,000. At, at one sitting, it took about 23 hours um, out in Los Angeles, and it was some years ago before I had quit gambling and wanted to just be more focused on, on being a professional, and mainly because once you really get into gambling, it, it becomes about the con. and. I felt like I was changing my whole lifestyle and all my hours around what time the fish were going to come in. And a lot of times you didn't want to practice because you didn't want people to see just how good you played. So I ended up practicing less and more just kind of being on the hunt waiting. And I just didn't like the direction it was going to go because even then I was, I was making money. I had sponsors. I was on the tour. And so I basically had quit and said, listen, I just want to focus on being the best. So I went back to just playing all the time. And I really felt like it was kind of a, a, a big thing off my shoulders to just be able to embrace excellence instead of having it be about the hustle. Well, I got to ask this, though. You said $90,000 in one sitting. I think you said 23 hours. You were playing pool yeah. for 23 straight hours? Oh, he'd have played longer, but that gentleman was going in and out of the bathroom, coming out, jumping around like a jumping bean. and. And I was just on coffee <laughs> and some sandwiches, and I was just exhausted between my back and just sleepy. And I just said, listen, I, we can continue this, but I need to get some rest. <laughs> and nobody likes that. A lot, of, a lot of those kind of underground matches are about really um, stamina, you know, endurance, focus. And, and I'm all about that, but I felt like he was cheating coming in out of, out of the bathroom. like all wired and you know everything all the time so I just thought I just had to quit so I you know if I continued maybe it would have been more maybe I'd have lost it back your husband is a professional billiards player uh, also I imagine you're both very competitive tension is there tension in playing I would not say that there's any tension when we're playing when we first began there was all different kinds of tension it, it was um, we were kind of getting to know each other and it's it's kind of sexy, you know, man, woman battling on the pool table. So it was it was a lot of fun, but now I think he's just not very he's a very competitive person when it's like him playing in the men's tournaments, but with me he's always been very supportive. And I almost wish he wasn't. You know, if I played great, I want to be able to be like, yeah. Instead he's like, Good job, honey. I mean, he just, he, he thinks of it more like we're sparring. Right. Like, you know, we're volleying back and forth, just warming each other up. Whereas I want to just crush him every time. I want to beat everyone, anyone, anytime, any hate, height, weight, size, sex, I don't care. I want to beat you, you know? And I, and I love it. Can you explain to us the difference between sweet housewife Jeanette and the Black Widow? When does the Black Widow make an appearance? The Black Widow just billiards or does she make appearances that are cutthroat in other aspects of life? Hmm. That's a really good question. I, I, at first I would say that the Black Widow really is only around a pool table, but I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. And we were, you know, minority. It was a completely black neighborhood with me being the only, you know, Korean family around. And so as I grew up, I was picked on. I was made fun of, not only for being Asian, but also being, like, just skinny and flat and scrawny where, you know, other kids around me were developing quite early. And 
my sister was valedictorian of our school. She was, I was in the gifted classes. I was, you know, one of the smarter kids, but it's not the same as being valedictorian. And so, and, and for me, I always kind of felt like the ugly duckling. I, I wore glasses. I was very uh, awkward. I, I felt awkward. And I always saw my sister as this like unbelievable beauty queen who was just brilliant and confident and smart. She was two years older than me. And I just, I just feel like I grew up really feeling like I never fit in anywhere. That's interesting to go from that girl to the woman who decided to pose in the ESPN body issue. Uh, <laughs> what, what just happened there? That's interesting though. That had to be a seismic moment for you. No, not a seismic oh. moment. Still not good with that. What happened? Are there bees in the studio? There looked like there are bees yeah. in the studio. <laughs> well, listen, I, I really thought long and hard about it. I was trusting ESPN that they, uh, owned by Disney. This was going to be a clean, good magazine. I've seen all the magazines. And the problem is when you type in Jeanette Lee, the Black Widow, and Google Images, it doesn't tell the story or the context of how it was showed, right? You're just seeing this big image. And I just remember the look on my mom's face when I, because I oh, wanted no. to show her. And, I, and she just went, she goes, oh, OK. And she's looking. And then she turned, and there I was, and she went, Oh, oh no, you know, no. my mom, this darling, good Christian woman who loves her daughter. And and um, and, and I said, Mom, and I was explaining this is oh, ESPN. No. This isn't Playboy. This is but it didn't matter. Oh. By the way, you may know I was five months pregnant at that time, five and a half, almost six months pregnant. My father's the romantic sort. He wants to ask you a question. Had the Poppy. Your host, my... Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> he just <laughs> got him. <laughs> totally rattled my father. You totally rattled him with a poppy. poppy. He, he forgot his question. Go Shut ahead, him down. ask your question. Poppy, Go. be corazón. Go. 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 It was weird. It was a conversation that we had. I don't know. I remember where we were. We were in the balcony, and I think it was on a whim. It was three days after we had met. Wow, three days wow. after you had wow. met. <laughs> yeah, well, wow. yeah, our, our our third date, and the next thing you know, he's he's going home and driving to meet my parents to ask for my hand in marriage. They said no, by the way. I mean, three <laughs> they days. They said you have to wait. <laughs> yes, three days, that seems unreasonable. Yeah, so well, it, it ended up being six months. We end up, you know, at first we were talking about eloping and, and then it ended up having a proper wedding there in New York City. So with my parents and my family and things like that. But it's been 18 years, so yeah. can't Jeanette, be that bad. Thank you for being on with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.